Well, hello, folks, and welcome to the Dieter Melhorn Fishing Podcast. I hope you're having a good day, whatever day it is that you happen to be listening to the show or watching it. Uh, for any of you folks that are podcast listeners only, I have a video version of this show that's on my YouTube channel, Dieter Melhorn Fishing. It's kind of where all of this started at, to be perfectly honest, and the podcast was kind of a spinoff, and then I started doing video versions of it, so anyway... That's uh, kind of the evolutionary, so you can see it or hear it uh, in a couple of different places. It's on all the popular uh, podcast platforms out there. So all you regular listeners, appreciate you coming back by. Appreciate you uh, checking us out again and sticking with us. And all the new folks, welcome. I hope you enjoy it. So uh, today we're going to talk about a couple things. One's going to be winter catfishing and what to expect uh, over the next couple of months. And I kind of... You know, some of the do's, the don'ts, ideas, things like that, uh, especially for some of you new folks, some folks who may be venturing out trying to catch some catfish. Uh, it's not necessarily the best time of the year to do it, uh, but it is good for some things. There's one of the best times of the year for, well, we'll get into all that in a minute when we get into that. The other thing we're talking about is a little bit of what's going on with the channel, especially the YouTube channel, the podcast, all that kind of stuff. going to bring you up to date on that. I haven't been on here in a while. Uh And I'll bring you up to date on all that and everything behind that. But give you that little update first. Um, It's been busy. It's been crazy busy in the fall. As many of you know, uh, I deer hunt a lot. My son loves to hunt. So we have decided to take time off from uh, the production and guide business uh, in October because that's when we hunt. We enjoy that. Uh, It's kind of something I've always enjoyed doing. Love doing it. So that's where we're at in the fall. Um, but we've had videos out the whole time. I basically stockpile a bunch of them, got them ready to go. So, uh, But that has had me busy. Also, the television production business that a lot of you know that I've always done uh, kind of you know is in post-COVID recovery mode, and it's 110% of what it used to be. So that's been crazy. It's been crazy busy all over the country traveling, uh, working on different projects for – all kinds of different people, a lot of them, some of them, some of you folks here on YouTube that have reached out to me that have businesses that are doing stuff for the web, marketing, promotion. We've done some stuff for you guys in addition to what we do on YouTube and in addition to what we do for everybody else. So it's been crazy. But uh, I've been slack on the podcast. I had some that were in the can basically and on the shelf. So we got some of those out and up uh, over the past couple of months. But this is the first new one. I don't have anything else cut. So I figured it's a good time to get something out, especially with us coming into wintertime and talking about uh, fishing. Uh, On the YouTube channel, for you guys that follow the channel, uh, we're playing around with some stuff. Uh, Some of the YouTube shorts, Uh, they're the short content, the vertical content with your phone vertical, that type of uh, stuff. Um, It's become very popular. Uh, People are scrolling through it, looking at it. But let me say this, it's not a replacement for the longer format videos. Those are still happening. Those are still the bread and butter of the of the channel. Uh, But people are consuming some of this shorter content and they're consuming a lot of it. And uh, some of these little shorter clips are popular with people, especially somebody who doesn't have time to sit down and watch an entire video. So we're playing around with that. I'd love to hear your feedback on that. You can put comments if you're watching this video on YouTube. Uh, down in the comment section give me some feedback if you're listening to it only well that's a little bit harder so send me an email go to my website dietermelhornfishing.com there's a contact section on there you can send an email and uh, I get those and love getting the feedback about stuff going on on the channel so um, but yeah we're messing around with that a little bit seeing how that's working and um, so it's Getting some good feedback. It's interesting how that content works, um, what works, what doesn't work, what people want to see, don't want to see. So we're uh, playing around with that some here in the fall. Um, one thing I'm going to try to do more of, uh, i got a note here about it, is some more live stuff. Um, there's a lot of people out there. Catfish Weekly does a live show every Monday night uh, that is kind of a talk show oriented type deal. Uh, that uh, they do with different guests and different people that are on the show. Lyle has been doing that forever, and uh, that's a good one to tune into and check out. Uh, Palmetto Cats does a show, too, uh, once a week. They do a live show. So 
there's some live stuff going on. So I'm going to do some. I'm not going to. I don't really have the time, ability, or schedule to do one consistently all the time. But I would like to do more from on the water and maybe some from here in the studio, some little question and answer things. So keep an eye out for that. And you're probably going to see some from out on the water. Um, they Sadly, happily, good, bad, whatever you want to call it, uh, double-edged sword is I've not had a lot of time to do those uh, in the past year, year and a half really, because the guide business has blown up so much. Uh, in the past, there was a lot more time spent out on the water doing, you know, YouTube videos, fun fishing, doing live streams while I was out fishing. Most of that time gets consumed with guide trips now. And, uh, you know, we're going to do well over a hundred days this year. So it gobbles up a lot of time. Uh, so I haven't done as many, but I'd like to do more, even if it's some stuff from the studio. I think the live interaction with people, I think they like that. I think they enjoy that. It's a great way to communicate. It's a great way to take questions live. I know you guys post questions a lot of time in the comment section on the YouTube channel. And uh, sometimes I answer them. Sometimes I don't. It's just, you know, I'm getting more and more of those, you know, more and more comments in there all the time. So, uh, but I usually take the time to read every one of them. Uh, scrolling through there, even if I'm on a flight somewhere or something, I can scroll through them and see what's going on with the comments. If it's a good specific question, a unique one, I'll try to answer it and take the time to do it. Can't answer all of them now. Uh, the channel's really gotten to that point where there's just a gob of them out there, and uh, it's, it's hard to keep up with, but I appreciate it. I love getting the feedback anyway. A lot of times those questions get translated into videos. Uh, sometimes I go back and answer them. Sometimes I'll answer them with a video, so... Uh, that's kind of what's going on there. Um, the uh, that's about it. That's about it with the channel. It's just uh, it, it, it's crazy. The guide business is going great. If you're looking for a guide trip, interested, send me an email. Go to the website DieterMelhornFishing.com. There's links to all the guide stuff on there. It um, it, it we're probably going to change some stuff around with it this summer. I don't know how much we're going to do on the weekends. We may. I don't know. I, I've got to play around with it. Some of that busy, crazy time during the summer. I know it's the only time some people can go fish, but it's gotten so bad on the lakes now that I, I think a lot of those summer trips may be starting a couple of hours before daylight and finishing by like 10 or 11 in the morning before it gets crazy stupid out there. But We'll cross that bridge as summer gets closer. So, anyway, right now it's winter. Well, the the meteorological winter is here. Uh, actually, no, it starts the taping of this. It's still November. It, tomorrow will be December, and the uh, first day of the calendar winter is like the twenty first of December. So we got a while. The bottom line is, it's getting cold. Uh, I, December, January, February is winter months. And, uh, for a lot of you guys, there's no fishing. Uh, things are icing over. Things are snowed over. We've already had a massive snowstorm up in New York. You guys up there, God bless you. Cause you got pounded with some snow. Um, in a lot of places, it's just getting cold. Uh, rivers are icing over or starting to, or, or it's getting just tough to catch fish in a lot of places tough to be out there in those kind of conditions and uh here in the southeast the south uh a lot of catfish country we're still fishing and we'll be fishing all winter long um you know nothing really changes as far as how much we can fish the only thing that keeps me from going is when the boat ramps will get icy which may be two or three times a year if we get some frozen precipitation but that's not happening anytime soon that's still you know that's probably going to be mid-january that's a month and a half away before that's going to happen so it's still fishable and for you guys that are experienced and fished a lot in the winter you know the ups and downs uh but for you guys that are new that are wanting to go out and do some fishing wanting to go messing around in the cold weather uh, gonna throw out a few pointers, a few a few things to think about. I've actually addressed this in a couple of videos that will be coming out, uh, but I'll kind of go over here in the long form content uh, for folks that like to listen to it. Um, the one of the things I mentioned in one of the videos is, and I see this on guide trips. Um, I, I, I some people show up for a guide trip when it's cold, uh, prepared for it, dressed for it. Uh, and a lot of times, if it's like stupid, stupid cold, I'll you know I'll give them the option. Let's go later in the day when it warms up because not everybody is suited 
one to handle cold, two having the clothing for it. And if you add in some wind or some precipitation, it gets miserable. But I had some people show up that were totally underdressed, underprepared. So my first point to all you guys going, dress for the cold. Dress for the conditions. Um, and I'll step back from that a little bit and, and say, take a look at the weather. Take a look at the weather leading up to that trip. Uh, just so you know what the weather's going to be doing, how it's trending, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, big thing is if it's 45 degrees and sunny and there's no wind, you're probably going to be okay if you're in the sun. It'll be chilly, but the sunlight, uh, no wind, you'll be able to keep pretty warm. Now, change that around to 45 degrees with a 15 mile an hour wind and it's overcast and cloudy. You're going to get cold if you're not prepared for it. Uh, it's a big difference that wind can make and whether it's overcast or clear as to how you're going to feel out there. Just the fact of being in the sunlight zone. Pay attention to all that. It kind of, you would think, is common knowledge, common sense. But, um, you know, a lot of people don't really think about it and, 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 you know, think of just how bad it can be out there, especially when you're out there for a long period of time. You know, if you're out there for several hours, you start to get cold soaked, especially on a windy day. And what little bit of heat you're holding starts to really get sucked out of you. So, it leads to a couple of things. One, you start making some bad decisions fishing, whether that be moving, not paying attention, not really caring about what you're doing. You're just more focused on staying warm than you are fishing. So uh, that's the downside to the fishing board. The other thing is, I said this in the video, is safety-wise. When you get really cold, especially if you get to that stage one hypothermia where you're starting to shiver, uh, your, your, your mind is not totally in the game at that point. And it can be a dangerous situation at that point. You know, if you're in an area that may be slick, wet, iced over, whatever, on a bank fishing somewhere, uh, you know, you're on a boat, uh, it's, it's compounded there with stuff going on. So, uh, just, just, you know, stay warm, do what you can to stay warm out there. Some people, you know, uh, use the hot hands. I use those, the chemical packs. They work great. Some place to put your hands and get them warmed up. Uh, I've been doing some stuff with the eye hood, electric garments, the, the jacket and the gloves. We've been experimenting with those things on the boat in some trips. The actual battery powered gloves actually work pretty good. We use those out in Kentucky on a deer hunt. Put them on a low setting. It's one thing I'll say with the, any of these battery powered gloves and stuff. Um, you know, put them on a low setting, not super high, so the batteries last. But the iHood gloves lasted all morning on a hunt. I don't know what the total run time was. We haven't done a total run time because I'll be honest with you, I can't find the batteries uh, for the things. They're somewhere. I got the batteries for the jacket, but in all the stuff we took to, uh, to Kentucky, I can't find the battery. So I got to find those to finish that test out. But those things work great. Now, the battery-powered jacket's cool. There's a battery-powered vest that I've got that, you know, adds some heat to you. Uh, I had Grayson trying it out. I tr played around with it a little bit. It's nice. Um, I don't need it. Uh, I've lost a few pounds now, so uh, you can sense the cold more, but I've always been kind of big anyway, so I didn't really need that. Some of you skinny people, those things will probably come in handy and will be a godsend in keeping you warm. Uh, but... Another big thing, keep your hands dry when you're out there or take a towel with you. Take a dry towel. Um, when you get your hands wet and you're out there fishing, it's cold. Picking up bait, throwing a cast net, whatever, messing with fish. When your hands are cold, especially if it's windy, it zaps the heat out of you. So if you can keep them dry, keep them dried off, it's going to help you a lot. So with all that out of the way about staying warm when you get out there, um, you know, don't get locked into you got to fish deep. Uh, or you, you got to fish shallow if it warms up for a couple of days. And one of the things I talked about in the video is keeping an open mind to where fish are. Uh, we get guilty of that in the summertime. Also, and I think the, the patterns in the winter and patterns in the summer are somewhat similar, uh, believe it or not. Um, but, you know, so many times in the wintertime, so many times in the summertime, like, oh, those fish are deep. The water temperature stable down low. And sometimes that's true. Sometimes that is true. Uh, but a lot of times those fish are moving up shallow for various reasons. Sometimes it has to do with oxygen levels. Sometimes it has to do with water temperature. Sometimes it has to do with an influx of precipitation. Sometimes it can just be a hot streak of days. And for whatever reason, bait's moving up shallower. 
there's more you know plankton activity that kind of thing and that's where the shad are going to and the fish follow so um keep an open mind to all that fish are not going to be in the same pattern all winter is what i'm getting at uh so keep an open mind to all that stuff that way you can kind of get out there and, uh, you know, if something didn't work and you're not going to sit there and go, well, I'm throwing out there in the deepest part of the lake or the deepest part of the river when those fish may be in four or five feet of water. It's just 20 feet from you on the bank. So it's a, uh, it is a it is a good time for bank fishermen too. Obviously, the guys in the boat, we've got an advantage. We can go anywhere. But the uh, folks in the boat that may be stuck in their shallow water, there's a lot of time during the winter time when you can still catch fish. One other thing that I will throw in there, as I get a sip of my drink, is um, bait. When it comes to bait and bait selection. One thing, first and foremost, if you've done the stink bait thing, buying bait, generally it's not the best time of the year to do that. Typically those stink baits, those manufactured baits, those commercial baits that have a lot of smell to them, are generally going to do better when your water temperature warmer up in the 70 degree mark, you know, and above. Uh, fish are more active, sense distributes better, uh, and it's a better time generally for using those things. Colder temperatures, you're a lot better off going with something that's more natural than this time of the year. If you can get access to any type of cut bait, any type of bait that is in the water that you're fishing in, I think you're better off with that. Now, I use chicken. I will use chicken all winter. I was wondering if it didn't work after the past couple of years. It's worked all winter. You can still catch fish on it. Uh, the one thing I will say here in the early part of the winter, uh, when before those temperatures really get down into the 40s, the water temperatures, uh, I like using a lot of big bait. That's when I really put out those bigger baits, aiming for some of those bigger fish that are seem to be more active and uh, seem to get caught more this time of the year. So. I will use those bigger baits, and I suggest you do the same. If you act, have access to some kind of cut bait, whether it be bluegill, shad, skipjack, uh, if you can use game fish in your area, if it's legal, crappie, bass, those kind of things, you can't put out too big a chunk if you if if you have big fish in the waters that you're fishing. Now, if you're fishing a community pond, a little lake, nothing but channel catfish, I mean, you don't want to be throwing baits out the size of your hand because you're not going to make a giant catfish magically appear just because you put out a big bait, you got to have those fish there first. But it's a good time to do it. Now, shifting gears a little bit, as those temperatures start to drop, uh, I'll cut my at least half my baits down. Uh, if I'm fishing six rods, we can fish multiple rods in the Carolinas. Uh, you know, half of those will be small baits, smaller baits, because for whatever reason, uh, and I think it may be some metabolic changes in the fish, what they're eating, what they're taking in, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I've had very good luck, luck with smaller baits in the wintertime once those temperatures get down into the 40s. Caught a disproportionate number of fish on large fish on those smaller baits for whatever reason. My personal best that came off of Santee Cooper was in late December around Christmas a few years ago. It was a piece of bait probably that long, not that big. And I had big baits out also. So uh, I always do that once those temperatures really get into the 40s. I put out some smaller baits. I don't know if the fish um, just, you know, metabolically have a harder time processing larger pieces. They don't want to expend as much energy because the bottom line is to process that food in their body, it takes calories and energy to that, to do that. So I don't know what the exact science and biology is behind that, but it does seem to pay off to try downsizing some. So, uh, you know, a, a few little things to, to keep in mind. And, you know, another thing I said in one of the videos was slow down. Whatever you're doing, whether you be fishing off the bank and you're casting out or fishing from an anchored boat, and you're casting out and you're changing bait every 15 minutes, and then you're moving after you ain't caught nothing in 20 or 25 minutes and you're hopping around, Slow that down a little bit. Uh, give it twice as much time. Uh, slow things down because the fish are not as active and as friends it is they are when it's warm. Same thing if you're trolling. I do a lot of trolling, dragging, drifting. Uh, in the summertime, I will run anywhere from half a mile an hour to 0.7 and catch fish all along the way. You can even catch them going faster than that. So, uh, wintertime, 
I'll cut that speed in half. I'll go slow. I it really, honestly, as long as the boat's moving, I'm happy. You know, it's a little harder to keep planer boards out. I run B-cap boards out there, and as good as they are at going out at slow speed, you get down in that point one, point two range, you're not going to plane as good, especially if you have any wind. But you know, point three, point four, I have no problem going slow. Uh, just so you're giving these fish that are maybe not as aggressive a little more time to eat those baits and putting that bait in front of them a little bit longer so uh, you know you can catch some good fish in the winter time it this next month uh month and a half is my time that i look forward to hunting down those 50 plus pound fish that we have where i fish in my area a 50 pound fish is a you're in the upper tenth of a percent of the fish out there, um, you know. So, you know, if you're fishing some other place, it may be 10-pound fish. You may not have fish nowhere near that size, but your bigger fish may, you know, be 10 pounds where you're at. You know, you go to some place, maybe the James River, and it may be 80-pound fish that you're looking for. Here, I kind of know what the upper end is. If you can get a 60, you've had a great year. So, uh, it's a good time to be out there doing it. Just be prepared for the cold. Uh, that's the biggest thing. Be prepared for the, you know, the elements when you're out there. It makes it a lot more enjoyable. You'll be a lot more committed to being out there all day fishing and uh, spending some time out there and, uh, you know, enjoying the holidays, maybe some time off from work, uh, getting out on the water. But those are some tips to get you out there on the water, maybe catch a few more fish and uh, put a few in the boat. So till next time, we'll catch you out on the water.